Well, where were we? Oh, hey, I forgot to mention. This is a member of the 1966 edition. Haven't found a large print Pearl of Great Price, but look what I found. Another large print Book of Mormon, 1962. I'd like to get a really old one sometime. Another four bucks. So I figured this time I'll put a coat of primer on before I... Because this, <laughs> this paint hasn't held up so good. And I, I've been reading this book in the rain and snow <laughs> throughout this series. And it's starting to fall apart. So <laughs> maybe I'll do a video of me uh, getting this one ready. <laughs> 22. Hang on a second. This is a uh, really interesting stuff. Sorry, but this one is worth actually. This one is probably one of the more important videos I'll do. So I'll try to be serious. All right, that didn't work. <sighs> Twenty-two. After he just got through uh, paraphrasing and ripping off Paul, claiming that this shit was written in uh, about B.C. 74, uh, 22. And now, behold, I say unto you, that I would that ye should remember that God is merciful unto all who believe on his name. Explain chapter 14 of Alma where women and children who believe on his name are cast into fire while Alma and Abimelech, or Abinadi, uh, two guys of Elijah, Moses, kind of, you know, lightning calling down status. You know, call up an earthquake, you know, or a storm. They just stand by and discuss whether they should exert themselves. They decided, no, nah, they're just those believers, those women and children, would just be martyred and go wing up themselves up to heaven after they're through sizzling and charring. That's just, yeah. Yeah, and then they save their ass with magic later on. Isn't that fucking special? Chapter 14, I've, check it out. It's, this one is even more important. Yeah, uh, merciful unto all who believe his name. Therefore he desireth in the first place that ye should believe, yea, even on his word. So he wants you to believe <laughs> and take his word for it. 23. I'll think about that. And now... He imparted his word by angels unto men. Yea, not only to men, but women also. So we're going to finally see some strong female characters in this book. It's a little light on that so far, and uh, most of these women don't even have a names. I think the last named one was a, a handmaid, basically a... a Cleanup lady. <laughs> yeah, but the queen didn't get named. <laughs> yeah, not only men, but women also. How fucking progressive of you. Now, this is not all. Okay. Little children do have words given unto them many times, which confound the wise and the learned. Yeah, I've seen that phenomena. It's called imitation. Especially if you get like some really crazy ass animated, you know, seizure having kind of preacher. Little toddlers can imitate him. They got videos of that on YouTube. It's pathetic. It's tragic. <sighs> 24. And now, my beloved brethren, as ye have desired to know of me, 
what ye should do because of ye are afflicted and cast out. Now, I do not desire that ye should suppose that I mean to judge you only according to that which is true. 25. Damn your prick, Alva Jr. <laughs> For I do not mean that ye, all of you, have been compelled to be humble yourselves. For I verily believe that there are some among you who would humble themselves. Let them be in whatever, whatsoever circumstances they might. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's sad. 26. Now, as I said concerning faith, that it was not a perfect knowledge, even so it is with my words. So just take Alma Jr.'s word for it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, blind faith in him is perfect. But otherwise, better not do it. Use your reason after that. <laughs> hey, this little negation bubble around their reasoning. It's sad. 27. But behold, if ye will awake and arouse your faculties. So we get to use our reason here. Let's see. Even to an experiment upon my words and exercise a particle of faith, yea, even if ye can no more than desire to believe, even until, until ye believe in a manner that ye can give place for a portion of my words. So you don't even, you don't even need all of them. You can cherry pick and underline sections and you know, knit doilies or whatever, you know. <sighs> 28. Now we will compare the word unto a seed. Now, if ye give place that a seed may be planted in your heart. They always go right for the heart, but not for the brain. Interesting. Yeah, don't plant that seed in your brain. It'll just die of reasoning. Plant it in the heart. Just feel that is true. Because you want it to be. You want to belong. Uh, plant it. Plant it in your heart. Behold. Now, if ye give place that a seed may be planted in your heart, Behold, if it be a true seed, or a good seed, if ye do not cast it out by your unbelief. Yeah, you totally dispel the magic with unbelief. You ruined the whole fucking seance. The Ouija board ain't working now. <laughs> Unbeliever. Fucking buzz killer. Don't kill the seed with your unbelief. That ye will resist the Spirit of the Lord. Not resisting that. <laughs> Behold, it will begin to swell within your breasts. Both of them. <laughs> Sorry, that's what it says in verse 28. <laughs> it's going to swell within your breasts. And when you get the, these swelling motions... Ye will begin to say within yourselves, sounds like a titty fuck. No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it must needs be. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not really. Uh, <laughs> if you feel these swelling motions, ye will begin to say within yourselves, it must needs be. 
that this is a good seed or that the word is good. It's good as gold. <laughs> According to Rust-Oleum. <laughs> yeah, the word is good. For it beginneth to enlarge in my soul. Yay! <laughs> it beginneth to enlighten my understanding. Yay! It beginneth to be delicious unto me. Yum! <laughs> I added that. Uh, 29... <laughs> Long ass chapter, but it's a good. One. All right, <laughs> thirty nine. Now behold, would not this increase your faith? What a titty fuck! <laughs> no, would have been. It would increase something, <laughs> but not my faith. <laughs> I must be misunderstanding. <laughs> My mind went back to default mode. <laughs> no, it wouldn't increase my faith. I think I'd need a little more than that. Come on. Anybody could ask the same thing of me. And it asked... The Emperor is fucking naked. <laughs> uh, I say it to you... Yay, nevertheless, it hath not grown up to a perfect knowledge. I'm switching soundtracks to the Godzilla, the best of Godzilla, from like 85 to 93 or something. I love all those movies, except for Space Godzilla, which was based on a video game and it sucks ass. But all the other ones are kind of fun. After a hard day... Just watch something destroy buildings and plots that don't make sense. It's much better than reading this, but similar in a ways. It's got no plots and it makes no sense. <laughs> it began to enlarge my soul. Yay! It began to enlighten my understanding. Yay! It began to be delicious unto me. All right, I read that. <clears throat> now. Behold, would not this and would not this increase your faith? I say unto you, yea. No, don't speak for me. Yea, nevertheless, it hath not grown up to a perfect knowledge. Thirty, but behold, as the seed swelleth and sprouteth and beginneth to grow. Then you must need say that the seed is good. And the brainwashing has taken hold. For, behold, it swelleth and sprouteth and beginneth to grow, like you just said. 31. And now behold, are ye sure that this is a good seed? Because it could be a J-dub seed or a Seven-day Adventist seed, or a, you know, Unitarian, or a, or a Unification, or any of those other seeds, you know, could be a, you know, bad seed. Disguise is a good seed. I say unto you, yea, for every seed bringeth forth unto his own, its own likeness. Thirty-two. Therefore. If a seed groweth, it is good. But if it groweth not, behold, it is not good. Therefore, it is cast away. And now, behold, because ye have tried the experiment. This sounds like some kind of a child molester come on. Come on, just try it. Or a drug dealer going, you know, hey, first shot's free. It's an experiment. You know, or that excuse in college for the reason why you're not by. <laughs> it was just experimenting. I'm speaking in cliches here, but you get it. An experiment, really. 
<laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> because ye have tried the experiment and planted the seed, and it swelleth and sprouteth and beginneth to grow, it must needs, ye must needs know that the seed is good. 34. And now behold, is your knowledge perfect? Yea, your knowledge is perfect in that thing. But just that thing? That thing, huh? And your faith is dormant because you totally believe this thing. And this because ye know, for ye know that the word has swollen, swelled your souls. And ye also know that it has sprouted up, that your understanding doth begin to be enlightened, and your mind doth begin to expand. 35. You know, Scientology, I, I took a stress test. They told me that, you know, a lot of times you gain extra IQ points for joining. That sounds better than, you know, those stamps that they used to get at the gas station. You know, extra IQ points. Fucking awesome. I could use a whole bunch. I know. <laughs> but here your soul expands. And I don't know if that's good or not, but I guess if it can take it. 35. Oh, then, is not this real? It's not real. I say unto you, yay. And I say nay, because it is light. Yeah, pretty light. Extremely light. And whatsoever is light is good. Not always. <laughs> and now behold, after ye have tasted this light, is your knowledge perfect? 36. Uh, behold, I say unto you, nay, neither must ye lay aside your faith, for ye have only exercised your faith to plant the seed that ye might try the experiment to know if the seed was good. 37. And behold, as the tree beginneth to grow, ye will say, Let us nourish it with great care, that it may get root, that it may grow up, and bring forth fruit unto us. And now, behold, if ye nourish it with much care, and a lot of bullshit, which is great fertilizer, it will get root, and grow up and bring forth fruit. 38. But if ye neglect the tree, and take no thought for its nourishment, behold, it will not get any root. And when the heat of the sun cometh and scorcheth it, because it hath no root, it withers away, and ye pluck it up and cast it out. 39. Hang on. Oh, wow. Now, this is not because the seed was not good. Neither, it is, is, it, neither is it because the fruit thereof would not be desirable, but it is because your ground is barren, and ye will not nourish the tree. Therefore, ye cannot have the fruit thereof. Because you didn't work hard enough. you got to work harder. You're just not quite good enough. I mean, the rapture happened on last month, you know. And nobody was good enough, apparently. <laughs> Forty. And thus... If ye will not nourish the word, looking forward with an eye of faith, 
to the fruit thereof that's going to come someday over the rainbow. Uh, or at the end of the rainbow, at least. Ye can never pluck of the fruit of the tree of life, which I think is somewhere in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> 41. But if ye will nourish the word, yea, nourish the tree as it beginneth to grow, by your faith with great diligence, and with patience, looking forward to the fruit thereof, if it shall take root, and behold, it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life. Why am I getting flashbacks of Invasion of the Body Snatchers right now? All of the versions. <laughs> 42. And because of your diligence and your faith and your patience with the word in nourishing it, that it may take root in you, behold, by and by, in the sweet by and by, ye shall pluck the fruit thereof, which is most precious. It's the one in Nephi and Lehi's dream way back in Nephi 1 and probably 2. I don't know. I don't remember anymore. Uh, by and by ye shall pluck the fruit thereof, which is most precious, which is sweet above all that is sweet, and which is white above all that with all that is white yea and pure above all that is pure and yea and ye shall feast upon this fruit even until ye are filled that ye hunger not neither shall ye thirst 43 then, my brethren, ye shall reap the rewards of your faith at the end of the rainbow, and your diligence and patience and long suffering, waiting for the tree to bring forth fruit unto you. And that's it for 32. <laughs> I thought it would never end, but how's about that for the, a nice recipe for brainwashing? Believe before you believe. Desire to believe, and you will believe. Yeah, if you want to be a slave, that's the chapter for you. 32. Peace. The fuck. Out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. I'll see you guys in 33, which I haven't looked ahead, so I don't know, but it's probably just as fucked up as this. No, I don't think anything's as fucked up as 32. <laughs>